All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode. It is another freezing night here in Ireland. It's about zero degrees. I can see my breath and my fingers absolutely frozen. But this is going to be an exciting episode because this is going to be the last in the engine series of the 8 Series, if that makes sense. So by the end of this episode, we're going to have a beautifully running, brand new looking engine bay, all the components back installed. I cannot wait to hear this thing start. So fingers crossed by the end of this episode, we're going to be converting the engine bay from this to this. Now I've just done a small bit of work off camera and that was the attachment of this small coolant pipe which runs down the center of the V. So all I've done is plug it back into the rubber hose on the back, tighten down the hose clamp and there's a small securing bolt here as well that secures it to the rear uh, coolant channel there as well. So that's nice and secure. Open ended at this end because it has to go into the back of the water pump. And now I want to focus on getting the main central coolant pipe back installed. So as you remember, I actually broke this piece in one of the earlier episodes. This is a brand new pipe and I'm going to get this installed along with some brand new O-rings. So I'm going to get started on that right now. There we go. Silicon grease. Oh, that went in nice and easily. Okay, so moving on to the water pump here. I've got a brand new water pump from BMW. This is an original part. Um, and whilst they do supply this large O-ring here, which is the main seal, they don't supply these two seals. So I do have them separately and they need to be installed now. And for some reason, when you buy one of these O-rings, they give you like 12 of them. So if anybody wants a spare O-ring, hit me up. That's one installed. Oh, nice. And I just want to grease up the seal as well because when you're pushing the water pump into place, it's actually quite difficult to do. There's quite a bit of resistance between this O-ring and the main case of the block, so. All right. Now I'm actually reinstalling this water pump kind of ahead of schedule. Um, if you remember when I took the engine apart, this actually came off quite early and I'm actually putting it back on quite early. Uh, reason being is it makes sense to me to install the water pump whilst I still have access to the two main uh, coolant tubes in the middle here just to make sure everything seats nicely. So it makes perfect sense to do it now. Nice. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so I'll just get the bolts installed. And finally, I'm just going to torque all these bolts to spec. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to reinstall this. This is the upper crank position sensor that locates into that bracket down there. And you've got this cable tidy here and that goes onto the front of the block at that location there. So I've got my new sensor. It's time to get it installed. Right, so I can slide my sensor in and then just line up the bolt hole and that cleans them up both nicely. I'm happy with that. Okay, so moving on to the thermostat installation, I have the brand new BMW thermostat here, the original housing, and I've got the O-ring as well. So I'm gonna start by greasing up the O-ring as usual. So there is an orientation of the thermostat. You see there's a slight bulge in the actual housing here. And that's where this piece here slots in on the back side. I'm happy with that. And then the O-ring actually goes on top of the thermostat. Despite real OEM actually showing it being on the back side, but it actually sits on the front. And then I can reinstall the housing. Nice. Right, I just want to show you guys the actual condition of the intake manifold gaskets. So these are the intake manifold gaskets and you've basically four of these. 
And for those of you not in the know, these basically seal the intake manifold against each head. Uh, and there's four of them, they go in those positions there. Um, I've got four of them, sorry, three of them cleaned up. There's four in total. This is the last one I need to clean up. And um, these are incredibly expensive. So what a lot of people do is they reseal them against the block using a gasket maker uh, like this. So as you can see, somebody else has used it before. I'm just gonna scrape all this off. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to do it properly. You're basically scraping away every single last bit. But it's totally worth it. Like I say, 15, 20 minutes and you end up with this, which is basically a brand new looking gasket. And so yeah, once they're in position, I can actually put on my, there's two engine hooks that sit on the front of the engine bay and you have, this is the return fuel line. So there's two new hoses on the front, they connect to the fuel rail and then you've got the return line that goes all the way back to the tank and I've got a new line there as well. So once I've all that installed, then I can reinstall my intake manifolds, which are these huge aluminium pieces here and I'll show you how good they came up in a moment. So yeah, I'm gonna get moving on this and I can get them all installed. So before I reinstall the intake manifolds, I've just done a dry fit of the actual gaskets just to make sure they're all lined up properly. I've got the rear engine mount here as well. Sorry, engine hook, and there's one on the front too, just to make sure I have everything in the right place. And like I say, before I get the actual intakes back on, I just have to install these. These are the rubber standoffs that basically sit on the top of each valve cover. So there's two on each side and they mount the accessories like the alternator cable on the left side of the engine. So these are going back on now. So I've already scraped my valve cover, as you can see, doing a dry fit of the intake manifold, but that was gonna happen. It's all covered up anyway. Okay, so I'm set to reinstall this. This is the alternator cable. It sits on the left side of the engine, just like that. Um, this can actually fail and disintegrate this cable and potentially cause an engine fire but I've checked the cable out and it's absolutely immaculate, it's actually like new and I've sprayed up the actual metal shroud as well so I'm going to reinstall that now. And with the right side complete I've also installed the two brackets on the left hand side as well. So finally I get to install the intake manifold gaskets. So I have them completely degreased. I've got the actual ports degreased as well. So the surface is perfectly clean. And what I'm gonna to use to seal them against the actual head uh, is this is L-Ring's Durco HT, which is a silicon based uh, gasket maker. So I'm gonna start applying this to the ports now. Okay, so I'm happy with that. You can wait anywhere from five to 10 minutes for the actual solvent to flash off, or you can actually seal it straight away. I'm gonna wait in the middle, just kind of five minutes, uh, and I'm gonna install the gaskets then. Time to drop these in. Don't fuck this up. Duly noted. I'll get all these bolts back in and torque them down to spec, which is 24 Newton meters. Seven. And once the gaskets are in, you can actually reinstall these engine lift mounts, which sit on top of these extended threads. All right, that's one side done. And I see there's some excess material on the inside, which I'm actually just gonna wipe off now. Okie doke, so we're moving on to these, the intake manifolds. I'm absolutely delighted how these came out. What I did was, you saw in previous episodes, I bead blasted them entirely, but I haven't actually sprayed them. This is the original color. All I've done is given them four coats of a clear coat. 
Um, so I, I know a lot of people spray these and they give them different colors, give them, you know, kind of whitish colors, gray, silver. I, this, is, this is the original color of the intake manifolds and I just put a clear coat on them. So hopefully that stops any kind of tarnishing or discoloration over the years. What I have to do now is I have two new gaskets uh, to basically seal up the back end of the intake manifolds. So that you've got this plate here and you've got a temperature sensor and I've got some new temperature sensors here also. So they're also going to be replaced. So I'm going to get started on that now. All right, now I'm just gonna clean up this seal and get the gasket installed. Okay, so it's important to note as well the fact that I bead blasted these. I used glass bead and the whole inside of this was full of glass bead. You need to get every single scrap of that out. So what I did was I made a plunge bin in the back garden and I plunged this about 50 times in it, scrubbed the inside, plunged it again, plunged it again. So every single last bit of glass bead has been removed. Because if any of that gets gets into the engine, it'll destroy your cylinders and piston rings. So, yeah, make sure it's out. All right, that's one done. Okay, so I want to do this nice and straight. Gonna get these top screw holes locked on first. I'm gonna slowly drop it down so it's more square on the seal. And that should be it. Gently push it on. Okay, I can see some gasket being squeezed out, which is good. And now I want to get these, the nuts reinstalled and torqued down as soon as possible. Just a quick tip, make sure you've got your actual bolts ready to go. That's an old one, absolutely filthy, and they all need to be cleaned individually. All, what, 24 of them? Jesus. Okay. Yeah. All 12. And of course, I forgot about the hard fuel rail that needs to go back in, so I'm just going to loosen these off really quickly. And this is the return fuel line going back into place. You've got a tab here and a tab here, and they both sit over the studs for the intake manifold. And now I can connect the soft line to the hard line. Like so. Nice one. Okay, so this is the much more daunting manifold. It's a lot more difficult to get this in and to get the nuts tightened down. Okay, so a bit of a downward angle. Then drop it down. Line up the bolts without destroying the gasket. Okay, and lower it down a bit more and push it in. There we go. Once again, I have my magnets installed inside my 10 mil socket. And that's the last one. I'm actually surprised how easily that all went. It's pretty smooth. It's almost smoother than actually taking them out. Very pleased. 
And now I'm just going to reconnect the temperature sensors on the back of each of the intake manifolds. Okay, so these are both of the original fuel rails um, and what I've got plugged in is 12 of the original fuel injectors. These have never been replaced. They are the original color um, and spec of the original injectors. Um, and I've actually tested every single one of them and they're absolutely perfectly fine. The resistance is bang on, but I thought I've come this far, and especially when it comes to the fuel delivery system, I want to have all new components. So what I've done is I've splashed out on a whole new set of injectors. So I suppose by modern standards, these are cheap. And we've got a full new set of original OEM uh, Bosch injectors from Bavarian Verk on eBay. Highly recommend those guys, incredibly knowledgeable. They specialize in injectors and this full set was I think 470 euro, 480 euro, something like that. So for 12 injectors, which is uh, incredibly cheap in my eyes. So I'm just gonna replace every single one of them. Um, the fuel rails themselves, they're just these long hollow bars. There's not a lot to them. It, it is wrapped in this kind of a foil protective heat wrap, um, which is absolutely fine. That'll clean up, no problem at all. It looks a bit old and discolored, but it's it should clean up. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's no rips or tears in it. So you basically got, uh, your fuel pressure regulator fuel pressure regulator sits in this small cup at this end and then you've got the actual fuel delivery comes in at the back end um, and on this one there's a slightly elongated bar here attached to it as well so the whole thing should clean up uh, it's quite a basic device each clip comes off the injector comes out pop the new one in I'm going to clean up the externals as well and I'm going to get started on that now So here goes nothing. I've got my fuel rail, all my injectors. I've got all the caps removed. I put a very, very small bit of silicon grease on the actual O-rings, just so they slip into the actual inlet holes here a bit easier. And I've got my small little, I don't know if you can see it, fuel hose here. That's actually, um, I've already dry fitted it onto this to make sure it actually goes on quite easily. So hopefully I have this fuel tube cut to the correct length because it needs to be almost millimeter perfect. Otherwise it doesn't all go together nice and smooth. That's all positioned. All the injectors are facing at a slight angle in this way because if they actually point directly towards me at a right angle to the, or perpendicular to the fuel rail, you can't actually get the connectors on in some situations. That's why they all have to be angled that way. So I'm going to install this fuel line and then push the whole rail into place. Okay, that went in. Okay, they're all perfectly seated. And this fuel hose is the perfect length as well. So I'll tighten up this hose clamp and I call that a job done. So while I'm still working on the fuel system, I'm reinstalling two new rubber lines at the back here. And these are the actual fuel supply lines that supply the fuel rail with lovely glorious fuel. So four new hose clamps, two new hoses, and it will be as good as new. Okay, so I want to move on to these next. These are, of course, both of the throttle bodies and they both sit on the front of the engine like that in that kind of a position. And they obviously control the amount of air that's allowed into the engine. And um, so this is one of the first uh, drive-by-wire systems BMW actually implemented. So I want to do a full internal and external refurbishment of these, but I want to focus on the externals first because I want to glass bead blast them, um, which is obviously, uh, you don't want any glass bead left over before you actually open these up. So I want to glass bleed them, completely clean them, 
make sure they're thoroughly clean on the outside and then open them up and actually do an internal refurbishment on, on them as well. So um, they're actually not in bad condition, but they obviously do need a clean up and the aesthetic clean up on the outside will really make the engine bay pop. So I want these, this great color to actually match the color of the intake manifolds as well. So I'm going to get started on that now. So this is the before throttle bodies. Okay, and that's the finished job. They came out absolutely immaculate, as you can see. I beat blasted all the externals and um, paid a lot of attention to the top, not too much attention to the bottom, as you can see, because you can't even see them. Um, but the externals came up absolutely perfect. I'm going to clear coat all the silver gray area. That's going to match the intakes perfectly. And I cleaned the in inside as well. As you can see, the throttle plates are absolutely immaculate. And the same on the back side too. Um, they move incredibly smoothly. Um, but I'm actually in two minds now as to whether to bother uh, not bother but whether to actually refurbish them now at this stage on the inside reason being is if you take them apart clean them up put them back together again you have to reinitialize them while they're actually on the engine and there's a process for doing that so i don't want that to interfere with the very first time i start the engine so i might actually install them as they are get the engine you know all reconnected everything connected back up crank the engine get it started get it running smoothly and then I can actually just pop them back off. It's only four bolts and take them apart. I might cover that in a future video. Actually, I definitely will be covering that at some stage. So yeah, but as they are, they're ready to go back on the car right now. Okay, so I'm moving back onto the front of the engine. What I want to do now is get the vibration damper reinstalled, the water pump pulley reinstalled, a few other bits and pieces. But what I want to focus on right now is both of these. These are the fuel breather valves that come from the carbon canister. So that leads, there's a line that leads back to the fuel tank. And so this basically vents out through a single line and goes into both these breather valves. So you've got a Y here. Ordinarily, that would attach on there like that. It's actually snapped and you get one line running up to uh, the right side throttle body and the other running up to the left side throttle body um, so the problem is this part is actually no longer available from BMW so what I sourced was this um, I got this locally in a, a good tool shop and this has 6mm barbs on it so I'm going to see how this works out uh, it will certainly fit the hose because it's 6mm inner diameter and it will clamp down no problem the problem is it's a little on the heavy side but you can get much lighter versions of these so if I order one of them I'll have it in a few days but it'll do for now to get the car started um, so you can see this is one of the original OEM lines I was just putting it in place it's got this protective anti-kink sleeve on it basically um, and that allows it to come up and around without impinging on the actual flow. So both these breather valves should be absolutely fine. Um, I want to get everything reattached and yeah, let me get all these hoses replaced. And I do have, this is the remainder of one of the lines, which is basically just plastic. So yeah, these lines definitely need to be replaced and I'm going to get started on that right now. Okay, so this is the first connection. And these are actually barbed fittings, so there's no need for a hose clamp on these. They're incredibly tight. I wasn't even trying to get them off. <laughs> they just do not budge. So I'm going to push this first one in. <sighs> and feed the fuel line up to the throttle body. That wasn't a satisfying click as expected, but it is on nice and tight. Okay, now, so with all of these lines replaced, you fucking rattling bastard. Okay, with all the lines on the breathers replaced, I want to replace this main line, which leads into the back of the carbon canister. It travels underneath the washer bottle and connects at the back. So to get this out, I want to remove the washer bottle and I actually have a brand new one of these as well. So I'm gonna take this out now, swap this line, pop in the new bottle. Take a picture for reference. There's a lot of pumps and connections on this. Oh shit. Always empty your washer bottle before taking the pump off it. Is this a screw? It is. <laughs> Who would have thought? Ah, there we go. Wow. 
one water bottle. Yeah, so I think the best thing to do is to remove this carbon canister completely. That'll allow me to replace this line very easily. And there's a secondary line here, which I'd forgotten all about. I need to replace that too. Clean the whole area, get it back installed. Right, so that's the hose attached to the rear fuel line. Yeah, I need to clean this up. But before I actually clean up this whole area, what I want to do is replace the carbon canister. Now these are about 200 quid and there's absolutely no point in replacing these when you can fully refurbish them. Um, so the purpose of the carbon canister is basically sits here and you have a vent on your fuel tank. There's a, an actual line that runs from that vent all the way up here. And when you basically turn off your engine, uh, your fuel will start to evaporate at a higher rate than it does when the motor is actually running. So all that fuel vapor inside your tank needs to be vented somewhere and you can't vent it into the atmosphere because it's dangerous, it's smelly um, and it's wasteful. So what you want to do is you want to vent it down a line into the back of this carbon canister and this is full of activated charcoal, little uh, charcoal pellets. And that basically captures uh, th that fuel vapor, holds onto it and basically when you restart your engine, what essentially happens is, so your fuel vapor, what way does it go in? Goes in through the back, um, the suction created by the intake manifold, the engine is sucking in air, it starts pulling that fuel vapor back out of the carbon and straight into your intake manifolds. And because this V12 has two intake manifolds, one on each side, and you've got two throttle bodies, one on each side, you basically need two fuel breathers, and that's what these are here. Um, and these are actuated depending on, well, a variety of different parameters. So, but these can be opened and closed electronically and that lets the actual fuel vapor into each throttle body. And it does that behind the butterf butterfly flaps as well, because obviously you don't want to be pushing in on the front side. So that's basically what this does. And instead of buying a whole new one of these, which are like I say, 200 quid, you can open them up, empty all the charcoal out, and put new charcoal in, charcoal in, and that's only about 30 quid. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I want to get this thing apart. <laughs> By the way, this is more than likely the original charcoal canister. Okay, so to get this out, you've got these all these little dimples here, which need to be drilled out, and that'll allow me to remove this cap. So we have more foam and a pile of carbon, which may or may not be okay, but I'm going to replace it. And there's the filter on the opposite end. Again, there's no smell of fuel from it. Okay, now that's completely sanded down. All the surface rust has been removed and it was just that surface rust. If you actually look down the inside, it is immaculate. Uh, so no rust, perfectly clean. I'm gonna spray paint this, but before I do that, I wanna put in my new filters. Sorry, not new filters, original filters. Um, these are probably in some way uh, fuel rated. Uh, I'm not sure how, but I'm apprehensive about putting in kind of aftermarket filters into this. So I've actually cleaned these. Uh, and I dry them and I clean them again and I dry them again um, and they actually smell like nothing and uh, there's no smell off them at all so I'm going to reinstall both of these and then I can get the rest of the contraption back together. And we have this plug which actually you could do with a bit of a clean. That came out perfect. This whole area has been cleaned up as you can see, all looks pristine and the carbon canister can go back in. So I have a new fuel line, refurbished canister, 
and a new clamp as well. Oh, looking nice and sharp. Held in by a 10 mil bolt. And the last thing to go on is this final vent tube, which clips back in down here. So washer bottle can go back in. And as you can see, I'm after picking up a brand new one from BMW. So these are about 95 euro, not too bad money wise. And I'm doing it purely for aesthetic reasons. As you can see, it looks absolutely immaculate. There's no getting this back to the original condition. So purely aesthetic reasons. I got a brand new white one that looks the absolute business. So this heat shield is the original. I'm after spraying that silver to clean it up a bit. And I use my own C-clips on here because I forgot to order the originals, but it's on there absolutely rock solid. That's just purely to protect the bottle from the heat of the engine. So I've got all new rubber grommets, which I'm going to start installing. And what else? Yeah, so it's actually divided into two compartments. This is for the intensive uh, screen wash. So this is uh, unconcentrated, so the, the, the pure raw uh, washer cleaner fluid goes in here. And then this is just pure water, and that's actually fed from a large reservoir in, in the boot as well, in, in the spare wheel well. So that's how that operates and I can get installing it now. And check this out, this is the intensive screen wash, the original label, as you can see, still available from BMW. That's about eight or nine euro for this little tab. So I can install the label and reinstall the lid. And that's another job done. And while I'm sorting out some of the smaller bits, I also have a brand new battery terminal cover, which mounts on here. It's quite a rare part that. And then two more little parts, these rubber standoffs and they sit here just underneath the heater valve. So I'll get them installed as well, because the two of these are ripped through, if you remember. One quick job I want to sort while I still have access to it is this. This is the brake pressure accumulator. Now, this it is part of the braking system, and whilst I have a basic understanding of how it works, I don't have nearly enough a good enough understanding to explain how it works. So, but what I want to do is I want to swap it out because this part only just recently became available from BMW after a long, long time of not being available. I have no idea if this is good or not, but seeing as I have access to it and the part just came available, I'm going to swap it out now anyway. It's just held in by two bolts, one here at the bottom, one at the top, and the two brake lines on top so it's affectionately known as the brake bomb uh, due to its kind of acme bomb shape as you can see and um, but it should be straightforward enough to get it out and i think now's the time to do it so i'm gonna get started time to bring out the big guns there we go <laughs> and it's off that's both connections removed, and now I just need to remove the rear bolt so I can get the whole unit out. There's the old one, and we have a brake fluid leak, but yep, it stopped already because there isn't that much fluid inside the system. And that's the old bomb. Bum 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 bum. Okay, let's get this bad boy back in. And this is the last knot. Done. So I can finally move on to getting the vibration damper back on. As you can see here, as I mentioned in the earlier episodes, it's keyed, so it only goes on one way. And that key or that stud is actually just at the bottom there. So I'm just gonna mount it on there. And now all eight bolts can be reinstalled. Four, five, six, seven. Where's the eighth bolt? With the vibration damper back in place, I can remove this protective cap off the water pump. 
There we go. And reinstall my water pump pulley. Four. So the time has come to get the throttle bodies reinstalled. As you can see, I've done a matte clear coat across the throttle body, same as the actual intake manifolds. What I've done is I've also pre-attached this vacuum line because these are an absolute bastard to install. I've got brand new fresh gaskets that seal against the actual intake itself. And then I can reconnect uh, these uh, fuel vapor lines as well. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'm gonna offer it up to the actual intake manifold. So I put a tiny bit of grease on them just to make it that bit easier. And hmm, this actually isn't going to be that easy. And check it out, we've got two brand new Bosch fuel pressure regulators. I'm going to push these into place right now. Okay, so because these vacuum lines actually sit on top of the wire harness, I'm gonna to have to lower that down before I can connect these up to the fuel pressure regulators. So this is uh, quite the milestone. This has been hanging up here for the last 10 months or so. So I can gently lower that down, get these out of the way. Just gonna slowly drop this over here and lower this down here. So that's the wire harness fully seated. And what I want to do now is pull through um, the actual vibration damper pulse senders at the bottom. That's these two cables here. And then we have a cylinder identifier plug, which basically, well, a wire that connects from here around to the actual um, spark plug uh, lead wire harness whenever I get that reinstalled. So you basically end up with two connectors here and two connectors here. Um, so I need to pull them through and get them in the correct position before I can plug everything in. That's going to mount there. These connectors took a lot of cleaning. They were absolutely filthy. All right. Nice one. That's also locked in place. I was looking at the arrangement of these actual lines and I thought this can't be right the way they cross over each other like this. It actually is correct. You have these metal standoffs which I've just temporarily put back. I still have to clean these up a bit. But these are what the acoustic cover actually attaches to. So it basically sits up off the engine. Now that will sit down a little bit further but there's plenty of room for the actual lines to run so that should be down there like that. And of course, I've just gone back on the work I've just done and I've re-evaluated the position of these lines and everything sits flat now, so nothing overlaps on top of the actual uh, wire harness uh, casing itself. So that's how things are gonna look. And this feels like another milestone. I can reconnect all the injectors one by one. Oops, I nearly forgot these. So these have been reinstalled. These are heavy duty clamps that actually clamp the fuel pressure regulators down to the fuel rail. Very important you don't forget to put these back on because these can squirrel their way loose and you'll have fuel everywhere. So there's a washer integrated in there as well. It really clamps it together. So there's absolutely no way either of them are coming loose. Okay, so check this out. This is the original alternator. And the reason I'm reusing this is because these things are rock solid and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Well, there was something wrong with it. It was reading in and around 12.8 volts at full load, which is uh, obviously way under what it should be. It should be well into the 14s. Um, so I sent it down to Almax Electrical in Dublin. They fully refurbished it. I sprayed it up myself, as you can see, um, just to give it that kind of newer look. We've got new brushes in here, and now it's reading up in, I think, 14.4, 14.5, something like that at full load. So that's exactly where it should be. So I'm going to put this back in the car. This is the air cool model, as you can see. Um, so basically the air duct connects on here, air rushes in the front of the car and cools the internals. Um, so that's basically how that operates. So yeah, this is ready to go back in the car. Right, the first thing I want to do is get these cables reconnected. 
and then I can mount it onto the actual engine. <laughs> Good old brake booster box. And just to confuse things, we have three different size bolts. These look identical, but they're not. And with the alternator fully in, I can get this back in. This is the cooling duct for the alternator. And it connects down here. And that's the duct in nice and tight and holds clamped in place as well. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to figure out what in God's name of an order these things went together in. So two washers. Nut. So something like that. Hmm. This is my partially assembled pulley assembly. So you've got the tensioner here and the actual idler pulley there. And it installs something like this. And this bolt at the bottom screws into the block. And then lastly, this bolt gets tightened up. Okay, that's it temporarily installed. I'm gonna get the other one in. And with the left side tensioner installed, this one is a nice and easy one because it's that little bit less complicated. I'll get this final nut tightened. And that's the second pulley installed. So I finally got the correct 1190 millimeter serpentine belt installed and this is on the AC slash water pump slash crank uh, uh, system here on the right side of the engine. Everything's in the correct groove and now I need to just to get the tensioner on the bottom set to the correct tension and that tightens everything up. That's it. And that's the plastic shreds reinstalled. But oh my God, how frustrating is that color difference? This is a brand new part, brand new part, brand new part. And look, they are obviously from different batches, but the color is way off. That is so frustrating. I'd expect more from BMW with three brand new parts. Oh, you know, BMW, if you want to send me some free parts, let me know, you know, some, some matching parts, that'd be great. You know, just leave me a comment, you know, send me an email, whatever. Yeah, that'd be great. Look at the absolute state of that. So this is the fuel filter assembly. It sits on the underside of the car. Um, and I cannot tell you how much difficulty I had getting it off as the actual mount here that mounts to the undercarriage of the car. This is all rusted through. Um, so I'm gonna have to make a new L black bracket just to get this back on the car. So what I did wanna do first is give it a quick blast, a quick bead blasting, clean the whole thing up. Um, Obviously make a new bracket, replace the hoses, replace the filters, and get them back inside the car. And here's the filter assembly after just one or two minutes of bead blasting. Delighted with how they came out. All these lines, brand new looking, no rusting, no pitting, perfect condition, perfectly reusable. The actual mount itself, absolutely fine. I'm going to spray all this, make it look brand new looking, give it a protective coating. Even the hose clams come up brand new looking from the state that they were in to being reusable is kind of crazy but anyway I'm going to replace all these hoses probably replace the hose clamps and these rubber boots can go back on as well because they're in well a very good condition there's nothing wrong with them in the slightest so they can be reused too boom that's the finished product so two brand new man filters new hoses new clips new paint job new bolts yeah absolutely rock solid um, and I've welded on the new mount as well onto the car, so this can mount straight on with a new bolt as well. Delighted with that. Yeah! And that's the last hose clamp. So I have a whole new array of hoses, two new fuel filters, refurbished bracket. Happy with that job. I finally get to move on to the ignition system now. So what I'm doing is installing these brand new contacts. These sit here, connect to the camshaft. And basically that spins around inside the distributor making and breaking connections as it spins 
and there's a specific firing order obviously um, as it sends ignition down each lead to each spark plug so I'm going to get these installed now and then I can reinstall my distributors. On goes the new distributor and it comes with three new bolts as well. Finally, I have all new leads here ready to rock so I can finally work on the ignition system. So like I say, all new leads installed inside the original plastic shroud. Um, these protective sleeves, they aren't original because you can actually buy them separately from BMW. So these are aftermarket, but it's a nice neat job there as you can see. Each of the boots has been labeled individually by me so I can tell which one is which because you want to get the order bang on here on the distributor. Otherwise the firing order will be completely wrong. And I have a brand new sensor here as well. So I've done the mod whereby you take off the end boot here and you slide the sensor on and then reattach it. So yeah, delighted to have a whole new set of leads and now I can get them installed on the car. Right, starting at the bottom, we have five, one, three, five. One, three, the ignition coil, six, four, two, so while I'm in this general area, I'm going to swap this out. This is the left side ignition coil which is this one. So I've got two brand new Bosch units here and I'm going to do the right side one as well, obviously as well. So two acorn nuts here. This just slides off this mount that I welded in an earlier episode and there's just two 10 mil terminals here. They come up, come off pretty easily. So time to get them installed. Look at the newly wrapped cable. That means it's all professional and stuff. So I'm only after realizing that I should have connected my valve cover breather hoses at an earlier stage. And it's incredibly tight trying to get them in, but it should still be doable. And what I have is a whole new set of hoses, as you can see. These are the original kind of T pieces. There's a small little inlet valve in these as well, but these are all cleaned up. So these will redo the job, no problem at all. So all new hoses, uh, two clamps there as well. These are the original hoses, which aren't actually too bad. But anyway, I should be able to get them installed fairly easily. And they'll end up looking a bit like this. What's a bit of a bummer is this kind of aesthetic shroud for the front of the engine block is currently not in production by BMW. It may not actually go back into production either. So for now, I'm going to have to pull up with this uh, small tear here and just the general dilapidated finish. But hopefully it comes available again soon. I can move on to reinstalling the crank position sensors now um, and the pulse senders as well from each of the ignition leads on either side of the engine. So I have this diagram and it's a little bit complicated as to which one is which, but I'm just going to follow that now and get these plugged back in. And then these are cylinders one to six. Like so. And this plastic shroud just pushes back into place. I'm going to get these air boxes back in. I have them nicely cleaned up, so it's time to squeeze them back in. It 
it's about time both of these went back in. So these are the mass airflow sensors, which obviously sit here and here. So I sprayed them up, as you can see, they have a much better finish now. They look brand new. And I'm gonna get both air filters installed, both air boxes complete, and get the mass reinstalled. I've been waiting a long time to get this in. This is an original, a brand new OEM BMW radiator, which costs the same as a small country. But it's good to have an original part for such a crucial component. And let's see if I can get it squeezed in. One radiator temp sensor and crush washer. Right, so whilst I still have the opportunity, I'm gonna slide the headlights back in now because once the radiator brackets are in, I won't be able to squeeze these in. So now's the time to do it. So we have two new radiator brackets. Rock solid. These yellow caps just protect the entry point into the transmission cooler section of the radiator. So I can now reattach both of these lines, which I have kind of set back here out of the way. That's the top one. And where's the bottom one? Stumbled away down here. And that's tight. This is a good time to get the new radiator hoses installed as well. So I'm gonna try and squeeze them in now. And that's hose number two. This is the shroud fully assembled. So there's individual parts here. You've got this coolant hose here, which has to be routed through the actual shroud. You've got the expansion bottle and obviously the shroud itself. So this will slide straight down. There's gonna be four connections. You've got your coolant level sensor here. This is a coolant hose leading to the water pump. This leads to the center of the block. And then this connection here leads to the top left of the radiator here as you look at it from the back. So all of them need to be connected up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna squeeze this bad boy on. Nice. There we go. Connector back in. Shroud back installed. I'm just finishing the shroud off. There's two clips on each side with push pins. That's one. And then the other. One, two, and last but not least, this is the HVAC pollution detector, which sits about here. I'll just go finger tight with this and the connector gets reinstalled. One of the last parts I'm gonna work on is this. This is obviously the cooling fan and it's the original BMW cooling fan. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, so I'm gonna reuse it. It actually has a 1991 uh, build date on it. This fan clutch more than likely has been replaced at some stage, but I'm gonna replace it again, just to be sure. I have my brand new one here, so I'm gonna get this installed now. Very fancy. One new fan clutch. Now, if you don't fancy paying over 100 quid for the original BMW cabin filters, you can go for these ones. These are the MAN CU 3037 filters. And I find if you just cut them lengthways, they slot in no problem at all. So they're the ones I'm going for. And they were 24 euro, very, very cheap. So this is the original engine acoustic cover. And as you can see, it's actually not in bad condition, but it needs a bit of cleaning up. And these are NLA or no longer available from BMW. So yeah, let's do a 10 second refurb on this.
And now the final piece. Look at that. We still have some rusty screws here to sort out, but I'll do that in a future episode. It's not time to start celebrating just yet because I have to put the guts of, what, 40 litres of fluid into the engine. So I'm going with Mobile Super 2000. This is a 10W40 semi-synthetic. So engine takes seven and a half litres of that. Um, I obviously have my fluid for the hydraulic system, which is the Febby one, which uh, everybody uses pretty much for the A50s for the hydraulic system. We have 13 litres of coolant needs to go into the engine. So for this first engine fill, I'm actually not gonna go the full 50-50 because I'm gonna drain it out again pretty much straight away. So I'm probably gonna put in maybe a third of it as coolant, the rest is uh, deionized water. Then I obviously have all the screen wash as well. That are, I'm just gonna throw in five liters of that. And the ATF, um, because I detached the lines from the uh, ATF cooler, which goes in the back of the radiator, I lost maybe about a liter of fluid. Now the annoying thing is the dipstick, which is located over here, it's showing that the transmission is still full of the correct level of fluid, which is obviously correct. It doesn't take into account that I've lost all the fluid in these lines. So it's gonna be quite hard to determine how much of that to put in. So I say I've lost the guts of a liter. So I'm gonna use this comma stuff here, um, which is uh, Dexron 3 compatible. So that should be absolutely fine. So yeah, that is a lot of fluid. Better get filling. I'll start with the easy one. This tank's actually filled from the reservoir in the boot, so I'm gonna go fill that with some water. Like I mentioned, I'm really not sure how much ATF to actually put into the transmission, so I'm just gonna to top it up by half a liter to start with, because I know I've lost at least half a liter, and I'll top it up as required. I'm going to start bleeding the system now as well, just to make sure there's no wear in it. That should be sufficient. So I've done a full five liters in the engine, and I'm actually going to add another liter on top of the oil filter and then top the rest up directly into the engine. Try not to make a mess. Perfect. And let's not forget the CHF 7.1. So this is the hydraulic fluid. We've got the mesh filter on top there, and that should filter this fluid as I pour it in. I can hear it gurgling away. The correct fluid level for this is about 10 mil from the top, and that's where I'm going to stop it. And this no doubt is going to have to be topped up as the engine runs, as it circulates throughout the hydraulic system. And the last fluid to add in the engine bay is the brake fluid. So I'm gonna add some dot four in here and get it going. So I just pumped the brake pedal about 20, 30 times. So I'm gonna to top it up again with some more hydraulic fluid and repeat a few more times. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna add some go, go juice. I have five liters here and I've got an additional five liters as well. So that'll be a total of 10 liters going in. Glug, 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 glug. Start her up. That's it, there's literally nothing else to do now. It's full of fluid, full of fuel and everything is pretty much done. So 
there's a few things that I'm going to expect to happen. So obviously there's no fuel pressure and no oil pressure. So I'm going to let the oil pressure build up slowly. And I'm expecting to hear random noises. The hydraulic pump's going to make a lot of noise, even though there's a small bit of fluid in it. The whole system obviously isn't full of fluid. Same goes for the cooling system. Um, potentially we're going to have some smells, maybe a little bit of smoke if there's anything on the exhaust manifold. And yeah, just general odd noises. Maybe at the very start, a bit of gurgling. Um, hopefully no banging or knocking or anything like that. So yeah, there's nothing left to do, but uh, turn that key. Let's get this thing started. Now I am at a bit of a disadvantage here in that the clocks on the dash don't actually work. Um, that's something else I'm gonna have to get sorted. I do have all the lights on the cluster, but Leave that door open. Um, I don't have any clocks, so I'm not going to be able to see fuel level, engine temperature, stuff like that. So let's give this a go. Hmm. Starter's engaging, but it's not turning. Battery voltage should be good. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm ending the video quite abruptly there, as you can see. Reason being is the damn car won't start. And the reason it's not starting is I'm 99% sure it's the starter motor being kaput. Um, so I just recall from back in January or so, I tried to start the engine with no accessories attached. So the hydraulic pump, AC, everything was disconnected. I just wanted to make sure the engine hadn't seized in any way from sitting up for so long. Turn on the ignition engine turned over no problem at all but I recall there was a small wisp of smoke coming out of the starter which is located down here down the left side of the engine and I turned it over for a bit more maybe a good six or seven seconds and I saw a slightly larger wisp of smoke coming out of it so but I assumed because the engine was turning over it back then I thought maybe there's some other bit of degreaser or crud or something on the terminals that was causing the smoke so I didn't think much of it but now here we are seven months later three months later and the engine won't start so pretty sure the pinion is popping out from the starter but then no voltage is well voltage is being applied to the actual motor but nothing's happening the engine is just flat dead so it's a very kind of distinctive noise uh, I can turn the engine over by hand so it's not seized in any way so that starter needs to come out which leads me onto the lift, which I've got myself a brand new um, scissor lift, as you can see, a nice early Christmas present. This is a one meter scissor lift. It's not that particularly high. It's uh, up to, about in the, well, one meter essentially. Mostly used by detailers, uh, tire changers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's gonna change things for me dramatically. I don't have much ceiling height here, so it's gonna work for me pretty well. It's going to change things for me dramatically in terms of doing suspension, brake work, underbody work, exhaust, all that kind of stuff. So can't wait to get it in the air. That's going to allow me to change the starter motor. So um, let's get this unpacked and get the car in the air. Well, the lift is certainly paying for itself now because I have the starter out. So this is one old crusty looking starter, as you can see. It may well be the original. It might have been refurbished at some stage, I'm not too sure, but judging by its condition, it is old and crusty. So um, the solenoid here was activating, the pinion was kicking out, but and there was power going to this, I presume. So maybe there's a brush stuck or something or disintegrated, exploded inside, but I definitely saw a wisp of smoke coming out of the starter area. So definitely gonna send that off to be refurbished or if I can pick up a refurbished one, because I'm not quite sure if the original boss one is even available anymore. Um, so I'll briefly run through how you get the starter right, because this is one of, well, commonly regarded as one of the worst jobs you can do on an 850. Now it's important to note that this is, of course, a right-hand drive 850, and the process is a little bit different, because I read online that some guys actually get at the starter, the back right, and can pull it out the top, once you take the washer bottom and a few bits out. I decided to come at it from the bottom, because on these right-hand drive models, the starter is actually located at the back left of the engine, which is down here. Um, so what I did was, you have to start by removing the exhaust. Now this is not an original exhaust, basically from the cat back, cat's missing, but the process is much the same. Disconnect the muffler, um, the hanger at the back, sorry. Uh, there's another hanger in the middle, and then on, I think there's another hanger here just by the transmission. And then there's the bolts obviously leading into the downpipes. So these are the downpipes. Um, these are the bolts that basically hold the downpipes onto the actual headers coming out of the engine. 
and they are the only real problem to be honest which everything else was plain sailing i do it all by myself but having a second man really helped me do this job and um, so this is where those bolts go through there's one here there's one here and there's a, a mirroring one basically in here and in here so it's really handy if you get someone with a 12 mil spanner and basically just hold it in situ while you disconnect the nut from the underside of the engine so one man on the bottom one man on the top and then basically get them to hold it as tight as possible here and then you crack them open basically and um, so that allows you to remove the down pipes so i'll actually show you just underneath the car so like once you have the down pipe off it's a relatively simple procedure and uh, i disconnected the battery harness from the very top let that hang down um, and then you want to remove the heat shield off the actual starter. There's just a few 10 mil bolts. That comes off pretty easy. That's the heat shield there. Just slide the heat shield out. And then this is obviously the transmission uh, and your starter sitting here. So you have a large 12 mil nut here on this side, which leads to a 10 mil bolt on this side. This is easily accessible. You just undo that. There's another bolt that actually connects it to the engine block. Undo that as well. And then there's another, uh, again, uh, brother of this one further up top another 12 mil and that's a bit of a bitch to get to but a long extension just all the way over the top of the starter with a ratchet here crack it open undo it and then give the starter a bit of a shake and it basically passes out the bottom here and you can get it out so like i say it's commonly regarded as an absolute bitch of a job and you know what it's not the worst once the exhaust is off once your down pipes are off you can lift it out the bottom pretty easily so i actually thought there was going to be more stuff in the way but there wasn't it actually came out relatively easy so like i say i might send this off for refurbishment um just depending on what's available the ones i've seen online are all actual remanufactured units anyway so it may be a good thing to actually keep the original get it refurbished have the same sound all that kind of stuff so whatever the best option is i'm going to talk to my specialist and see what he says so delighted to get that out and hopefully once i get the new one this thing's gonna start up. So yeah, talk to you in about a week or so. A mere two and a half weeks later, and I have my new starter motor. So another shout out to the guys, Almax in Dublin, who sourced me this unit. They did the alternator refurb. Uh, this is a Bosch unit, as you can see, all new components. Uh, they still have my old unit. Uh, they gave me this new Bosch unit, as you can see. Everything's new, new solenoid, all the connections, brand new, um, pinion nice and sharp. Yeah, can't wait to get this back in the car, so, and I'm going to start that now, actually. So I just need to get the heat shield reattached to it, but I want to do a quick bead blast on that to clean it up. Same on the exhaust. Uh, I've already done a quick bead blast on the downpipes. I just need to do one or two wells on it just to stop the heat shields from rattling. So they've broken away a little bit, but they should repair no problem at all. And I can finally get this damn thing started. So... Let's get this bad boy in. So finally, the starter's in. So I did a refurb on the downpipes. I re-welded any of the rattling heat shields, sprayed them up a bit. The starter's in there as well. Refurb heat shield, installed bolts and all redone. Um, and the exhaust, any brackets that were kind of had surface rust or anything like that, cleaned them all up. Bracket here, bracket here. Um, I cleaned up the exhaust in general. So on this side of the car, it's a lot cleaner. I blasted any kind of surface rust off the actual exhaust pipes themselves as well. So yeah, everything's looking a lot cleaner. Just need to reconnect the battery cable up top. Now we get this thing started. Fingers crossed. I keep saying that and it won't start. Last step is just getting this starter cable reconnected. All right, she's ready to rock. Everything's recording. Let's start her up. Needless to say, batteries are connected. <clears throat> oh, right, we have some noise.
So I was a little bit worried there with some smoke, but it's just some crud down on top of the exhaust manifold. You can't really see it, but I can see it. So it's the following evening, as you saw there, I did two starts. It was a bit late last night, so I didn't want to be making too much noise. But there was a bit of groaning, a bit of gurgling going on. So just want to check these fluids. And the hydraulic fluid is way down. I think the coolant level is actually really quite high. So there should be no issue there. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So I want to type, top up that hydraulic fluid, brake fluid. It's still pretty full. I need to work that pedal a bit. Um, and then obviously washer fluid's fine. I must check the actual oil level as well. And the transmission fluid level too. So I'm just going to top this up. Uh, this is taking quite a lot of fluid. I took the guts of half a litre. Oh, oil level's quite low. It's right on the minimum mark. That definitely needs to be topped up. And then transmission fluid. right on the minimum mark too. That also needs to be topped up. I'm gonna give it pretty much another full liter. Done. Let's give it another go. So smooth, super smooth, absolutely flawless. No leaks, super smooth, no vibrations. Actually, give me one minute, I've got the proper test for this. Well, I think it's safe to say that that's the engine finally finished. Thank God. It's been, what, five months since the last video, waiting on parts. It's just been an absolute nightmare. Um, but I'm absolutely delighted with how it's turned out. As you can see, it's idling absolutely perfectly. It's revving up nicely, nice and smooth. It comes back down to a nice flat idle. Um, so the engine itself seems to be running incredibly smoothly. 
occasionally there's a bit of a shake to the engine and then it settles down again so i'm not quite sure what's causing that so i'll have to look into that a little bit more um, and it does seem to be smoking quite a bit which uh, i haven't really shown it seems to be alternating between the two different exhausts which could potentially indicate that the oxygen sensors are incorrectly connected which is very possible seeing as the wire harness is hanging out of the actual bottom of the car with just a cable tie and the fact that it's, it's an aftermarket exhaust as well so that could be all that is but again i'm just gonna have to look into those two issues but for the large part engine is i've had it like idling 15 20 minutes and it's absolutely fine occasionally like i say the shake comes in it um well maybe after two three minutes and then just disappears so i'll have to see what's causing that but when i think of all the things that could have gone wrong i mean apart from the starter issue the car cranked as you saw four times started up absolutely perfect uh, fuel delivery is working fine fuel injection is working fine cooling is working fine the hydraulic system is working fine um, so and all the belts are absolutely fine all the accessories um, absolutely no problem at all all lines are fine rubber hoses no leaks in pipes uh, all the coolant lines at the back of the engine it's perfect absolutely perfect and i'm very very surprised because um, uh, i always look at these things and always imagine the worst case scenario and it's absolutely perfect and um, so absolutely delighted with how it's turned out um so i suppose the question now is well actually before i ask that question is some people have asked how much does this cost me so there's about seven thousand euro in this engine bay right now so but there's a lot of original oem bmw parts there i'd say 80 percent plus all the key components they're all bmw the quality is there so they're going to last a long long time so that's pretty much the reason i've done to it I, i've spent all that money on the original parts um, and stands to the value of this kind of car as well so these cars are only going one way in terms of value and i want this to last you know another 15 20 years with a lot of these components so and i, I think it certainly will um, and the question i was about to ask was what do i do next do i move on to suspension or do i look at the bodywork because rear subframe there's a fair bit of rust on that that needs to be sorted out the sills are very rusty as well and there's a bit of rust at the back of the bumper area as well so that all needs sorting and should i be working on suspension putting all new parts in so i'm getting all new struts all new control arms center links drop links all that stuff's being just brand new straight away all the old stuff's coming straight out do, do i go to the effort of putting all that in and then having the car destroyed with dust and sparks and the whole auto and uh, all the welding and all that kind of stuff has to be done so i may get the bodywork sorted before i move on to suspension brakes all that kind of stuff so i weigh up my options but the next step directly after i finish this video is to drive the car to the local nct center the car is now insured um, and i'm going to register it here in ireland because it's still a uk car so once i get that sorted then i can look at the other things i just mentioned so they'll be in future videos um yeah so thanks for sticking with me i'm going to enjoy the rest of my pint um, and here's to a lot more great videos with the 850